Then there is a whole nother side of family TikTok that isn't so wholesome. And it's just content that is straight up rage bait, straight up romanticizing neglect of children. And oh my God, have you seen those videos where the woman picks up like 17 diapers in her house with peace and love? Y'all don't just change a diaper and leave it there on the ground. Okay, I get you're stressed and tired, but how much tired, how much more tired are you gonna be when you have to go around the house later and pick up poopy diapers that have been laying around the house? Girl, whatever this is. Welcome back, y'all. I feel like these are the same people that are like, you would love being a kid. Being a parent is so much fun and then they're just like yelling at their kids constantly and talking about all it's like the people that like joke about how stressful marriage is they're like ugh, marriage ugh, ball and chain only with parents it's like oh my god you're gonna love being a parent oh shut up barbara i'm talking and it's like ugh, kids am i right and it's like what part of your life do you think people like what part are you selling to me right now okay like what part it's been a wholesome night with the resilient jenkins got the floor swept and mopped in the bed area and got the beds back down for bedtime she got the floor swept and mopped in the bed area she got the floor swept and mopped in the bed area you done lost your damn mind. When you get your damn mind, you call me. What do you have to say about it, Kenji? <sighs> exactly. Even Kenji's tired of this. <laughs> Silver said I saw a post that said today feels like the entire country is waiting on the results of an STD test. Absolutely. We are, girl. Absolutely. You know what? No shame in an STI. Got to take your medication. But let's just hope we can avoid that altogether. Okay. Let's just hope we come out of this election season without needing to go to the pharmacy. You feel me? TikTok has this way of romanticizing really toxic things. So I'm not surprised that this is becoming a huge problem on the platform. The problem being just this normalization and romanticization of truly mediocre parenthood, especially more recently, the resilient Jenkins situation on TikTok, where it is a family of basically six going on seven, because of course, who live in a one bedroom apartment and the kids don't even have mattresses. And the parents are snuggly and buggly all up in their one bedroom that has updated lights and a PS5 with a big TV screen look people have already been having this discourse on the internet on how people just don't like to see poor people live the jenkins family is a result of a horrible economy that we're in right now people should be attacking capitalism not them um because what you see isn't always the truth say it with me what you see is it always true thank you this is a family that believes in being quiverful because supposedly god told them to have more kids oh no don't bring her into this god did not ask to be here god is not a part of this mess okay she is not she is busy helping kamala malala kamala la 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 she is busy god does not have time for you we are an election season girl and though they can't afford the ones that they have already yet they're having a seventh and mommy jenkins wants to have more because supposedly her husband told her that it's okay as long as they go viral with each kid that they have so that they can make content off of it this is a family yo honestly though every family vlogger i see i'm kind of suspicious of i am including but not limited to the trisha paytas i say this every time but trisha absolutely revamped her stance on the internet her like place on the internet by having that baby there is no way y'all would have kept up with trisha the way you kept up with her if she wasn't having that baby she makes her kids too much of the content for me not to be convinced that her sweet family and every part of it is absolutely also a part of money, which don't get me wrong. Good for her. Good for them. But also not so great for the kids. You know what I'm saying? It is interesting. This idea of like, should my kid be on the Internet? Probably not. Family where the dad said that he refuses to get $30 an hour because he's quote unquote worth more. So he said it's <laughs> I love when, no offense, people think they're worth more. That will never not be funny to me. Like that will never not be funny to me when people are like, I'm worth more than $10 an hour. Um, not according to your bank account, not according to your state of living, not according to anything, girl. Have some humility, have some humility. Oh, I'm too good to work at McDonald's. Um, you sure about that? But also how dare you, how offensive. You know, during 2008, when the economy crashed, some of my brother's friends' parents, okay, we're working at five guys and like fast food restaurants. And that must have been really hard for them to go from a career to an industry that collapsed to working at fast food. But they were there providing for their family. And that's a real adult. That is adulting. That is parenting. Parenting is getting a job at McDonald's if that's what it takes to put food on the table for your kids. And that is what adulting is. That is true adulting. Those people are truly the ones you want to root for. Because regardless of the way y'all shame them for having to do this, at least they were there doing what they could. And that's commendable to me. It's better for him to make zero dollars than any money at all. But in reality, it was exposed that he doesn't want to make $30 an hour because that means he's going to have a W-2, which means that he's going to be forced to pay child support with yep. the secret hidden family that he hid yep. from his current wife. Not only that, tell me why the baby mama came on TikTok to expose his ass too. Let's go. Hi, I'm the first baby mama who walked out of his son's life. 
He has more than one son. He probably has more. Not only that, apparently. No wonder he doesn't want a job. He's gonna have to be responsible. He's gonna have to be responsible. You know what I'm saying? Chat says, are we worried about uh, election day? Absolutely not. We're not worried about election today. We are optimistic and happy because no matter what happens, we will adapt. We are survivors. We are our ancestors' grandbabies, and they did not work this hard for us to give up because a white man came into the U.S. office with a bad wig. You know what I'm saying? We are here to promote good hair care. We're here to promote optimism, and we are here to say no matter who gets elected, we will adapt. Okay? We will adapt. And no shame to men getting wigs or hair pieces or anything else. You know, I love a man catching up with his self-care. So if Trump feels sexy, I'm happy for him. But at the same time, does nobody love this man to help him out a little bit? I feel like he could have a different vibe if he wanted to. You know what? Doesn't matter. We are not worried today. We are optimistic and happy, okay? Apparently there's a private investigator involved too, where apparently and allegedly, this woman isn't even married to this guy and she's still what? legally married. What? Per quoi? Per... <laughs> what? What'd she say? to her first husband who's in prison for a girl get a divorce girl i don't like paperwork either but get a divorce saying his own mom well, uh, yeah i don't feel bad for them I what happened what about his mama where apparently and allegedly this woman isn't even married to this guy and she's still legally married to her first husband who's huh? in prison for saying his own mom well, uh, what his own mother his own mother has allegedly has got to be that is I, yeah, I don't feel bad for them. And y'all, this is literally proof that you cannot trust everything that you see on the internet. Not even the supposedly wholesome family that is trying to get out of the struggle type content. I, I don't know if they were ever considered wholesome. Content. And also, they're from Portland, bro. I live 10 minutes away from Portland, Oregon. And when I tell y'all, I know the type of people who live there. So I have a saying this, okay? Only God can judge. Call me Judge Judy because um, I'm a judge. <laughs> Call me God because I'm judging especially when it comes to children. First, y'all know the drill. I gotta pay my bills. So here is a shout out to our sponsor for this video. Let's go. I'm also trying to pay some bills like everybody is. So if you guys want like the stream, it really does help. Oh, Shopify. When you think about brands and businesses that are absolutely slaying it right now, like Alo Yoga, All Birds, and even Skims, it's easy to focus on the cool brands, smart marketing, or just how iconic the products are. But there's one not so secret part of their success that's okay. often overlooked. Okay, the business is behind the business. That makes selling and buying effortless. And what is that secret? Shopify. Of course Nobody it is. Nobody does selling better than Shopify, period. It's the home of the number one check on the planet. And here's the also not so secret secret, ShopPay. This boosts conversations around your product up to 50%, meaning way fewer abandoned carts everywhere and way more sales. So if you're- I think Red Link also use spotify a lot of people use it and they love it i haven't figured out how to use spotify no not spotify shopify <laughs> i probably haven't figured out how to use it because i don't know which one it is <laughs> wait spotify shopify oh that's not good that's really going with the dyslexics over here okay <clears throat> Who are the resilient Jenkins and why is everyone on the internet mad at them? Now, if you guys aren't chronically online like me, then you probably have no idea what's going on in the world of family TikTok influencers. Despite this world already being crazy, there has recently been a family on the side of TikTok that has completely gone viral for being even crazier. I understand being in survival mode, but there's just some things you can't let get that bad. You know what I mean? Nothing works, my dude. Constantly smell like cash up in here. The resilient Ooh. Jenkins crew has come out and said their house is infested with lice and bugs. Go outside. Nah, nah, nah. Go outside and cleanse yourself. Cause it ain't everybody in the house. It's you. The Resilient Jenkins is a family vlogging TikTok family of four kids, two adults, and another kid on the way. Who let's go, Jamie. Let's go. Oh my god, three away, three away. Let's go who are a family that live in a one bedroom apartment. They are low income and they're just trying to make it work. Their kids seem to be happy and healthy. The father is in the picture, encouraging people who are also struggling to do their best. And quite frankly, I see nothing wrong with that. Psych, it's actually not like that. <laughs> Psych. At all. Recently, this family went viral for mm. just, I feel like oversharing their struggle because it's not an involuntary struggle. It's 100% voluntary, okay? Turns out that these people who live in the one bedroom apartment actually let their kids sleep on the kitchen floor and the living room floor while the mom and dad have a- Okay, they have like, you see here, wait, look at this. Apartment actually let their kids sleep. Okay, on so they've got one mattress for one of the babies. The kitchen floor and the living room floor. And then this, this pad thing. So it's not even a mattress, it's like a pad thing. Or while the mom and dad have a nice mattress and bed, which the kids don't even have, with a flat screen TV and a PS5. And turns out the dad doesn't even want to work, despite him being fully capable of doing it, especially as a fully functional, able-bodied person. Because 
you know, Izzy, though, because I kind of feel like if you're not willing to work, something's wrong with you. I actually think it's mental health. I think you have to be sort of mentally impaired to not want to work. Not literally, but kind of like your inability as a human to evolve and have like a biological experience in which you do not provide your own sustenance has some indication of mental health problems. Not that you should enjoy like working necessarily. Some people really love to work like, you know, and some people don't. But the idea that you do not want to provide for your family or you do not want to excel, like there's something there that I would argue is sort of an impairment, whether it's introspection or mental health or something like that. I just think it doesn't make sense to be an actualized introspective person and to say, I'm going to bring more babies into the world and I'm not going to work any harder to provide for them. Like this disconnect is very human. So humans are going to human, right? But I think there is something there that's sort of like, I think they're doing their best. It's just their best isn't good enough. Like it is sort of a, a mental impairment. I just don't think that that makes sense, right? Chat says, I think the problem is that people work and they're losing over half of what they earn due to taxes. Okay, nobody gets, you're not getting taxed 50%. So first of all, that's not true. And paying child support holds people back. Um, you shouldn't have made the babies. You do not get taxed 50%, first of all. And second of all, you have to pay child support. You're the one who brought the baby into the universe. That's what it's for. Don't be making babies unless you can support them. So you can't sit here and say, why should I go out there and work harder to pay for a baby I brought into the universe and you're not paying 50% tax. So at the end of the day, like even if it's, you know, 50% of your income, right? Like it's, that's your mental impairment there. That's not doing the math, right? Like, I think that your inability to do the math to say, oh, if I bring a kid into the world, this happens. I think that is sort of education, mental health, uh, something's wrong. Like you're not thinking, right? And I think that that's the thing is like, he's not smart enough or thoughtful enough or caring enough or educated enough or introspective enough or extrospect enough thought something like something's going on there. Right. Right. Chess is on discord as somebody who hates, um, some of the jobs I've worked, I'm at, I'm mentally unwell, but loving making money and doing better. You get taxed less with babies as somebody who works at a tax office. There you go. There you go. So I just think like there is something to be said about a person's decision. Now to meet them compassionately, I do think human beings are having a biological experience and they are a product of their environment. So these people don't just exist as the great Madam President Kamala Harris says, like you think you just fell out of a coconut tree? You exist in the context of everything that came before you, right? So like they don't exist in a vacuum. They are a product of their parents and their parents' parents and their parents' 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 parents. Like they are a product of a generational curse and they are not making any move to break it, though maybe in their brain, the best way to break it is to sort of become internet famous, but they're going to lose. I think they're not really doing it for the right reason. It's like, look, when you make decisions financially, you don't want to be escaping something or doing it out of fear. You want to do it out of joy of it's the right decision, right? Chat says, I'm sorry, but you got to understand I've lived in one of the poorest cities in the United States and actually considered one of the most unsafe cities in the world. And for some reason, as a mentality persists, they cease to thrive. And then instead of working, they just hustle. I don't know what that means. Like when you raise learning over 27 people that have been murdered and that's before you reach your... I don't know what argument you're making, um, but I think you're making the same argument I'm making, but from the bubbled perspective, which is valid. I'm trying to ask you to zoom out, right? Like, like this person is making these decisions with only the tools that they have. But I wonder if they were given better tools, could they make better decisions? And that's the question. Let's go ahead and finish this video about the Jenkins because I think it's a really important conversation to have, especially with the election today. If you think about it, this is what people are afraid of, no matter who you are. You're afraid to be a minority with no resources, or you're afraid to be a conservative who feels like you're paying other people's bills. So let's talk about that feeling, because that's what the Jenkins in evokes in so many people. The reason I blocked the Jenkins, but I also blocked everybody making videos about them, was because I felt like everybody was getting triggered, like, because our traumas are so real. And people, people were making videos saying, like, hey, I grew up like this. I grew up like this and it was horrible. Like you're ruining these kids' lives. And then other people were like, hey, I think you're just being like really anti-poor and like, it's not fair. There's so much validity to this. 
But I also think there's a lot of nuance to be had with this particular couple. But this is like every <laughs> this is like every conservative's nightmare when it comes to helping out with welfare, which, by the way, I'm happy to pay my tax and contribute to welfare because I think people need it. Even if people take advantage of it, I think more people need it than take advantage of it. Right. Really fast. RL with the super chat. Thank you so much. Says, have you heard of Ali Sanvia? She does philosophy stuff. Yeah, we reviewed her videos on sh on stream before. Yeah, we have. OK, let's keep going. Because he said if he doesn't get more than $30 an hour, he'd rather just not work because he's worth more than that. But in reality, it's because he doesn't want to pay child support to a secret family. Hi, I'm the first baby mama. He has more than one son. And on top of that, Mr. and Mrs. Jenkins aren't even actually married. Mrs. Jenkins' real husband is in prison. I don't even know them and I know all their business. Do y'all think that's normal to have all your business out there? To have your children's business out there? Because I don't think it is. And trust, lots of people have lots to say about this family. And honestly, I agree with the criticism. Constantly smell like cat here to come on the internet and say that your place smells like cat mess and you are seven people living in a one bedroom apartment why do you have two cats girl what do you guys think about that i i actually so um we do our family budget and we sit down together and we go over every single you know penny we spend and everything da, 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 da. and we have an indiana budget so i have a cat we have a cat named indiana jones and we have an indiana jones budget and we talked about okay if Indiana has cancer and it's a $20,000 bill, are we paying that bill? How does, are we going to debt for the cat? Like, what's our relationship with this cat? Because the truth is, like, we're not having kids partially because of financial inability to pay for those kids and raise them in an environment that I think they're worthy of. But more than that, we contribute to our cat alone and our cat does cost money. And I'm always curious on people who decide to get pets they can't afford. Now, do I think pets absolutely make your life better yes i think they make your life better i think people who are disabled poor um who have ptsd who have like i think having a pet can be the best thing that could ever happen to you i love prison programs which um in which they're allowed to take care of animals i think animals are such a beautiful joy in your life but i also think you should treat them with dignity and take care of them and i do agree there has to be a standard of expectation of care with animals like there is with people and I think that's what's so difficult about this. And I know as somebody, you know, I've had people in my life who were, you know, kind of and kind of taking advantage of the system in a way. And they would constantly get new pets all the time and then give them away when they would grow up. And I just sat there and thought, like, what are you doing? And I just think some people, rich or poor, doesn't matter. They will take advantage if that's a part of their personality. I don't think it's about if you're rich or poor. Rich people take advantage of people all the time. They just do it in nicer clothes. So we think they're not doing it, but they are right. So I don't think it's about being rich or poor. It's about whether or not your character will allow you to take advantage. I didn't even know they had cats. Y'all don't get Mr. Fluffy and Mr. Whiskers out of that situation. I hate when hoes have a bunch of kids. And then on top of that, they add two extra mini mouths to feed by getting cats or dogs. Mittens doesn't deserve that. Okay. Constantly smell like open here. If your apartment smells like cat, you should probably clean it. Can I just say something? There's this really weird thing that I've been seeing on TikTok where it's like, oh, poor core. When you grow up poor and everything's like dirty and gross, it's like, um, I don't know, y'all. I grew up dirt poor también and like my mom still cleans. Like, can we not make being economically struggling a synonym for being dirty? And for sure, for sure, a mistake that people make is allowing it to be an association. Like, if anything, if you're poor, you don't have enough stuff to make the room dirty. You know what I'm saying? Like, I just feel like... That is not a good association. Like dirty does not mean poor. And disgusting because it's actually not normal. And whenever this subject is brought up, people want to talk about, oh, classism, that, classism, that. Y'all are classes. Actually, y'all are classes for associating low income with lice and cat piss and things being filthy as normal in that lifestyle. When that is true. That's that's what's kind of offensive. And why are people assuming like, oh, they're dirty because they're poor. You guys are judging. Um... I kind of feel like it's not a poor thing. I actually think it's probably un in some ways, like I was watching ADHD TikToks, which at this point, guys, I would bet a billion dollars I'm ADHD. There is no way. You know how I'm like going to get my autism assessment because I'm not quite sure, but I think it's possible. But I am 1000% confident about ADHD. It's like so obvious to me that I have ADHD. It's like, it, it, it's so obvious to me. But the way I would clutter 
I am so much more organized now that I'm married and living with somebody like we're both ADHD definitely, but it's one of those things where we work very hard to keep things decluttered for each other. But when we lived in our own apartments, um, we clutter fiends and I was a clutter fiend. Um, I'm one of those streamers that like, Oh, perfect set. But if you turn the camera around, it's like clutter, but I, I don't do that anymore because I'm trying really hard to be aware that I live with somebody and I'm trying to make the environment good for the both of us. And we, it's a good way to keep each other accountable. But if I was single again, girl, the way I would have piles of clothes everywhere, the way I would have like OF outfits, you know, cause I do photo shoots. I would just have them everywhere. Like I would just be messy, you know? So I think also another thing that's happening in these communities or in these families is they could have undiagnosed ADHD. They could have neurodivergency issues. They could have plenty of reasons why things are happening the way they're happening and they don't even realize it. And then you're making kids and you're having families and you can't get those families checked. You know, it's like, there's so many things at play. There's so many layers to deconstruct this, to take this family apart and try to decide, okay, what brought us here? What made us like, they're not just assholes who are taking advantage of the system. They're humans brought up in the world to think taking advantage of the system is within good character. That's even more interesting to be a person who thinks, oh, this is a good, I'm doing a good thing by taking advantage of the system, by taking advantage of other people. That's interesting. The fact that y'all are willing to have babies, you know, you can't afford is a part of the human experience and more than just poor people are doing it because being rich is not a testament to whether or not you can afford or take care of a baby. Lots of human beings as a part of their biological experience will procreate when they are not prepared to be parents, rich or poor. It just, in this image, in this way, it's more in our face. So then we're like, we can't say, well, at least they have money. Well, at least they're giving them an education. Have any stories? I could tell you, I knew a girl. Uh, she was a friend of a friend, hoarder, neurodivergent, very messy house, poop on the toilet. It was a mess. She was smart enough to go to college, was a scientist, thought she was poor her whole life, thought she had no money her whole life. Then on her mother's deathbed reveals her mother had $4 million. She became a multimillionaire overnight, had no clue her whole life. Her mom had money because her mom raised her as if she was in poverty and told her they had no money. Then she wakes up mid twenties, millions of dollars. When I met her, by the time I met her introduced from a friend of a friend, by the time I met her, she only had like $500,000 left. She was losing all her money. She tried to open comic book stores. What a nerd virgin queen tried to own multiple properties, but she was kind of crazy. Like not like not in a bad way, just like she needed a lot of help, but she didn't have it. She didn't know how to. So she was going to go poor all over again. Kind of interesting. Like you think it's as simple as I just need money. Mental health plays such a big role in this. The fact that she was educated. So so <laughs> like this i'm fascinated by people i'm fascinated by people always so that's how i look at this family this family is like any other family i meet who don't have the resources the tools the thoughtfulness the introspection or the patience or wisdom or humility to make a different decision so they repeat cycles of generational curses here we are in another cycle is not true i'm sorry i've seen plenty of rich people who are disgusting and disorganized and i've seen plenty of poor people who keep their places nice and tidy so don't even being constantly infected with lice because of the cats that you have that you can barely take care of let alone your own children is insane having laundry that's molded in the corner i mean you could just rehome the cats and give them a better life like instead of rehoming the cats and saying like i can't take care of these cats i would love for them to go to a loving family they were like let's keep the cat cats and cause this issue that's what's crazy that they're willing to keep the cats instead of rehoming them. <sighs> Corner, which can be so bad for everyone's health in the household, especially for the kids' immune systems and lungs, is insane. Sorry, but that's not called being poor or low income. That's straight up neglect. There's a difference. At first, I wasn't going to speak on the whole family of six living in a one bedroom situation because the topic of impoverished families is very, very sensitive. And a lot of the times y'all neglect the fact that a lot of the reason that this happens is systematic. And that's why a lot of people accuse y'all of perpetuating eugenics. And she's absolutely right. The reason why a lot of people end up in these situations is because the economy is bad. I mean, I've said this before in my videos right now, capitalism and the economy is going down a route where it's anti-children and it's anti-family. As much as you hear nowadays in- And I just want to say something like eugenics is government institutionalized from my understanding. Like you can't just have like 
even if you are pro eugenics, it doesn't mean anything will happen until you have the government backing from my understanding. So I just want to make it clear on my channel. I'm never pro the government telling you what you can do with your body. I don't care how impoverished you are, how how absolutely not suited you are for parenthood. I don't think the government should ever regulate who can have a baby. Ever, 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 ever. So I just want to make it clear from my perspective, I am not interested in talking about governments coming in and deciding who can have children. That is no one's business. But I think we should educate the population to make the decision to choose not to have children until they're ready or capable or maybe not at all if they don't want to. But I never want anyone else but you to make that decision. Politics talking about like PS vote Kamala Harris. It's all about family. We need to prioritize family. No one can prioritize family and having kids because the economy is that bad. People can barely afford their own groceries and rent. Which is why you shouldn't be having babies. Get birth control. Do your due diligence. Stop spending money for just a little while and other things that you don't need as a priority and focus on getting yourself under some birth control. Because I tell you right now, with a little bit of birth control, you can breathe a sigh of relief, still get, you know, it on. You can still have intimacy with people without that extra worry about bringing a baby into the universe when you're not prepared. Rent, and then they get left with like $1 for their savings if they're lucky. How could we possibly afford kids in this economy? Ew. So I understand that this is a topic that's very sensitive, but at the same time, why are you having multiple children knowing damn well that you cannot take care of them? At one point, it is absolutely a choice. It and at one point, it is a choice. And that's the problem people are having with this family is they said they intentionally had two children. And I think that's important to take into consideration. I do think for some people, they make a choice thinking it's the best way to do things. And I think for other people, they just don't know any better. And then I think with lots of people, they just, you know, they figure what's the harm in having a baby? Oh my gosh, I have the new episode of the Mormon show coming out and people be making babies when they're not prepared, okay? You'll see that episode in the next 24 hours once YouTube approves the upload. I have the second episode coming out about the secret lives of Mormon wives and people be making babies and they're not poor. They're rich and they're still making bad decisions about making babies. Humans are gonna human. It is within humans, like a human's nature to wanna procreate and have sex. It is what it is. It is absolutely a choice to continue having children and to continue raising them in straight up poverty. And that is so unfair to not only you, but also the children, especially the children. The children are okay. They're in a safe environment. Children don't. It's interesting. Chat says until you're ready, it's hard though, because at a certain point, women become less fertile and way more likely to have complications. And I want to say this, this is how I think you do not have to think like this. This is how my brain works. I already mourned the idea of not being a mother. I mourned the desire going away. I mourn the fact that my body couldn't handle it. I mourn the fact that I was never going to be financially secure to, to have a baby in this state. I, I am in the process of always, you know, realizing that this was a choice I made because it was towards my joy. So ultimately the mourning stopped and I stopped mourning because I transformed into a person that wasn't going to have kids because it doesn't align with my values. So regardless of waiting until you're ready, if it never happens, that's also okay. It's okay to mourn that process, but I do not feel entitled to making a baby. I think people feel entitled to being parents because that's your biological experience. I think we should move past that desire to feel entitled to parenthood. Now, if you want a system that supports you and pursuing that, I think that's right. I think the government shouldn't get in the way of you procreating, you know, if that's within your reason or that's within a reason. But I think there's a part of this conversation that is interesting to me where people feel entitled to be parents. And that's interesting. Like, that's an interesting perspective. And then, I don't know if that's, that's good or not. I'm not sure. I haven't decided. Diet Water says, can you freeze eggs? Can't you freeze eggs? I mean, I'm not going to freeze my eggs. I, I, Brittany also personally doesn't believe in working that hard to have a baby. I also don't want to be a parent. Like, I think this is important for everyone to hear me. I do not want to be a parent. I mourned that. I already, I already changed my mind. I didn't, I don't want that anymore. I wanted it for most of my life. I do not want to do it. Um, it's not worth it. There's not enough things in, in, um, not enough things. It's not worth it. Like I'm not interested in the same way that like, I don't, I, it's not a storyline I'm willing to engage in. Right. So I think, um, I think that's the part. And also like, I just, yeah, I'm not going to work that hard to have a baby. Like no offense, freezing my eggs, IVF, God bless you all. Girl, I'd rather watch anime all day and spend my money on Crunchyroll, but like you do you. That's what I'm saying. Like, I don't have the desire to be a parent. And also I believe in like ethical adoption and stuff like that. But, you know. No, they're poor until someone else points it out. 
And then I even see somebody say children don't know they poor. Yes, they do. Yes, the f they do. All right, hear me out, y'all. Many times children aren't aware of their family's economic struggle. I mean, heck, you think we didn't even know growing up that we were lower middle class? Like I knew, girl, because people brought it up. Please, when I came to high school with my knockoff Costco Ugga boots and the rich popular girls ran up to me thinking I had real Ugga boots. And once they found out it was Costco, they're like, oh, lame. And they walked away. I was like, I'm screwed. I'm never going to be popular. I can't even afford real Ugga boots. It's not happening. Trust me. Sometimes they are because the family will straight up tell the kids like, hey, yo, no Christmas this year, unfortunately. But if you weren't that type of impoverished growing up, then you were probably the kind that was like, hmm, I have a feeling that we're not well off and I can't ask for certain things. Children are like sponges and you don't really have to directly tell them anything blatantly. They just kind of pick it up. And as they get older, it does affect them. You know how many people I know and that my friends, friends know, or just stories I've heard of people who grow up in these big families that cannot afford anything and how trauma it is as they got older yeah it is far too many many of them will say that they weren't necessarily do you know i think more i think growing up in a 10 kid family like i did it wasn't the money that was traumatizing because i think we had enough it was the times the time available i think it was the my parents energy i think i think that was what was hard the hardest part about growing up in a big family was that there was two parents to 10 kids and there just wasn't enough parents to some extent, not that it would have helped having extended family because we had aunties and uncles and grandparents, but I'm going to be real with you. It's just not the same. I, I love my grandparents and aunties and uncles, but there's no, no one can replace my parents. And so for me, like I'm, that wouldn't have been, that wouldn't have been what I would have needed as a kid. And my parents tried their best. So like, it is what it is. Right. Chat says, what are your thoughts on IVF? By the way, like, do you think it's unethical or should be done or accessible? I, I don't have very strong thoughts on IVF from an ethical perspective. Uh, I think, I think government shouldn't prevent people from doing it. I think it should be done safely and ethically. I think it's good that people want children. I think it's probably too expensive for families. I think, yeah, from an ethical perspective, I don't have much to say about it. Honestly, I don't think it's like hurting society or something doing IVF, right? I don't think it's like, ruining society having it you know it's probably more positives than negatives honestly really blatantly aware that they weren't well off but they knew that they had a big family and all the resources would have to go to the next kid and then the older kids would be parentified and would be put in charge to take care of the younger kids because the parents couldn't afford to stay home so they both had to work and it just created this toxic dynamic where no one could have anything of their own and in the jenkins case the kids can't even have their own room because of the decisions the parents made to continue to have more kids sure maybe the kids right now aren't totally aware but as they get older they will and i don't believe that this is a bad thing there are so many people who grew up with low social economic childhoods and still had so much fun and had so many precious memories but i think the difference is that i don't know maybe their parents didn't film it and shove a camera in their face while they were struggling accidents happen yeah that's interesting is it the family showing it on the internet that's impactful or is it the fact that it's happening in the first place probably the fact that it's happening in the first place more or less but yeah it is interesting when you film your kids and it is your life but it's also their life hmm people have kids on accident all the time the kid themselves is not an accident but it does happen through accident right people sometimes have children way before they're prepared to stuff happens and that's okay but i don't understand why it's considered controversial or problematic or mean or insensitive to tell people that it's probably best to stay prepared anyways even if you're not planning to have kids to have some sort of knowledge on how to raise kids to have some sort of job Look, I don't think it should be mandatory that parents take classes or anything, but I think it should be encouraged in culture. When I lived in Seattle and I nannied for affluent or like what better, like upper middle class families, one thing that was consistent in all the families is they had communities. They had even groups of parents they did like classes with. And those kids kind of grew up to be the friends, like their kids friend group. Like they made an effort to take classes, to be a part of communities. And this is kind of the difference of what's accessible to people at the higher income level or slash societal expectation too. They were bad parents if they didn't do it in their bubbles. So remember their pressure, right? Is like their pressure that is there is a societal one as well. Like if you do not have a nanny for your kids, if you are not both working, if you do not live in a nice house, if you do not do these things, then you're a bad parent, which encourages them to also create a system in which they are taking classes and they are educating themselves and they are 
you know, thoughtful about parenting. Now, of course, on the other end, they're both working. They're not having a lot of time with the kids. There's an exhaustion there. They have to hire a nanny, which is me. And the kids grew up thinking of me of extended family. And maybe I have a closer relationship with some of the kids, but not really. I always felt with all the families I had, I could never replace those kids' parents. I never felt as a nanny, and I worked full-time, 12-hour days, I never felt like those kids ever thought of me as their parents. I think we made it very clear that Miss B or Miss Brittany was here to help, but I was not here to replace. And I think that that was really well balanced with all the families that I worked with, you know? Um, how many years were you a nanny? I remember you mentioning it before and find it interesting. I, I've been, well, first of all, I've been babysitting since I was like nine years old. Okay. Cause that's how you made money in the two thousands. Okay. 1990, whatever it was like, that's how you made money. So I've been babysitting since I was a kid, but when I was about, uh, in like 2013, so I was like 23, 24. I don't know how old I was. I decided to start professionally nannying for real, like a nanny, not just a babysitter though. I did both and find families, build contracts, charge more money, get cl like I got, you know, certified in CPR. I took classes. I made sure that I was prepared. So I did that all through my 20s and uh, just slightly into my 30s during COVID. And then I stopped officially during the pandemic and I've been doing streaming full time since. So all, basically most of my 20s was basically nannying. I also did grocery for the first part of my 20s. Yeah. Did Brittany nanny for Dr. Kirk in Seattle? I don't think Dr. Kirk has kids, but I did nanny in Seattle, which means that when I watch Seattle content creators, ooh, I get the joy of being like, oh, I know where that is. I know what that is. I really liked Seattle. It was really a great place to nanny. Job or finances set up. We're not talking telling people to become the next Elon Musk before they have kids. I'm talking about right. the bare minimum. And a lot of right. We don't need you to be extremely wealthy to have kids. We need you to be thoughtful before having kids. And I don't think most people are thoughtful. I, I think like 95% of people are not very thoughtful when having children. So to be honest with you, eh, you know what I mean? Like, it, it's kind of hard. A lot of that also has nothing to do with finances. Are you mentally prepared to take care of another human being? Are you yourself mentally well? That is very valuable in raising a child. Are you the type of person that's going to be teaching your children how to persevere and seek hard work to not repeat the mistakes that you've made? I'm not sure if the Jenkins dad is doing that. And because it turns out if he makes a certain amount of money and has a W-2, he has to pay child support to his other kids that he also abandoned and can't afford to take care yep. of. So he'd rather make zero dollars instead of 30 an hour. Does that make sense to you guys? Now, okay. And I want to say this out loud. Because I've dated de deadbeat dads. I did. I've dated deadbeat dads. One. And that was a learning experience for me. I didn't know he was a father when I dated him. So I was dating this guy. I didn't know he was a father. I didn't know he was a felon. <laughs> and then I met his kid. And she was like, yeah, he's a felon. And I was like, what? And then... I met his other kid and his other kid. He had three kids, three baby mamas, and he was avoiding child support at every turn. And I thought, because I was stupid and in my 20s, if I could just save him, if I could just educate him, if I could just get him to be an active father, if I could just get him to be there for his children. And I learned after two years, I only dated him for two years, but I learned the hard way that this man was nearing 40 and uninterested in changing. And that's what it was, girl, okay? He had two teenagers who were pretty old because he got, had babies when he was 16. So he had two kids when he was 16. Back to back, when he was 16 years old, he had sex with one girl, got her pregnant. Sex with another girl a week later, got her pregnant. And those girls were like almost adults by the time I met them. And I was like, hello. And then, <laughs> and then there was a, a younger one that came along later. He claimed that the girl stopped using birth control. Who knows? Does it matter? They were a mess. He was a mess and he was definitely a life lesson, let me tell you. But I dated this guy and I kept thinking, okay, we just have to fix these things because I'm a problem solver, girl. And that's why I will tell you that I do not date for potential and I didn't marry for potential. And that's the point is this is the first person I've been with that I didn't need to hope for their potential to be with them. And that's why I love my partner because she's so great just the way she is. Because genuinely, like that's, that's what I could have hoped for because everybody I dated prior to that, I was just hoping and looking forward to the day they would be different. You learn the hard way, I think, when you're young, that not everybody is just having a hard time. Some people are just f***ing assholes, right? Like, I did look at them. 
grew up in a hard life, single mother, poverty, tried their best, was working really hard. His mother was a nurse, you know, and she was a mess. And I kept thinking, okay, I'm not going to judge poor people. And I was right not to judge poor people, but I should have judged them. And that's the point is that I don't want to judge poor people, but I should have judged these individual poor people. But also this is my opportunity to learn, it, you know, don't avoid judging and get yourself in trouble, but use that discernment and wisdom and humility to come to a good conclusion about assessing who a person is. So you can decide how to interact with them because that's really what this conversation is about. Um, Discord says I wanted to be a stay-at-home mom when I was younger and I was one of I was of that mindset. I'd rather make zero dollars and raise my babies than put them in daycare. But that under the assumption I would have a working husband. And yeah, don't get me wrong. In an ideal situation, right? Uh, in the, I, I think in the right situation, I think a parent should be home with their kids. Like if I had children, my partner would be the stay-at-home pa parent. And I'd be the working parent, even though I'd be working from home. Absolutely. Like I think that's an ideal situation is to have somebody with your children until they go to school. Right? Kay says, I think where you're saying judge, I would say discernment. Well, I say both, right? I think discernment is judging. I just think it's wise judging. So judging to condemn is wrong, but discern is just wise judgment. That's what I think it is. Yeah, but I think like, you know, everyone hears judgment and thinks only the bad judgment, but like, that's what a judge is. Like you're judging, you're assessing, you're categorizing, but it's like wise judgment, discernment. But yeah, all right. Topic two, the love triangle and the holy trinity. Uh-oh. I hate men like this. I hate, hate, hate men like this, okay? I hate that there is a specific type of man who thinks his nut, okay, his man juice is so precious to him. He thinks that is basically liquid gold and that it is God's calling, telling him to procreate as much as he can and to extend his legacy. What legacy? Debt and trauma? We can do that on our own. Like, I don't get it. Or men who don't step up to pay for the consequences of their own actions is disgusting. I love that. Debt and trauma is your legacy, literally. to me. But what I hate the absolute most is when that man pretends to move on and run away from his problems just to repeat it again. And or like when he tries to pretend like I'm a good man, I'm a stand up man. Look what I'm doing for my kids, like or even her. Like, But that's the thing is like, I really just think humans are like these little evolved little creatures, these little little biological creatures existing in life. And like these two people, they're doing exactly what they think is right. They're doing exactly what they think is right. Just like when Israelis genocide Palestinians, they're doing exactly what they think is right. And this is the conundrum of humanity. How do we all coexist on a planet where everyone defines what is right so differently? It takes a lot of wisdom and a lot of humility. In someone else's life. You can't just have kid after kid after kid and neglect kid after kid and neglect after kid after kid simply because you can. Oh, and by the way, I know women do this too. Okay, I believe in equal rights and I believe y'all are both dumb. Some relationships don't work out. I understand that. Some pairings of people aren't meant to be. Many times it is worse for people and couples to stay together than to just divorce. I get that. But there's a difference between that and then having kid after kid after kid knowing damn well you can't afford it. Abandoning kid after kid to the point where your own baby mamas are coming onto TikTok and dragging you. And what's even more insane are the women who get with these type of men. And then these women are like, oh, my kid. I mean, they're same, right? They're the, like the other side of the coin. They have to be paired with somebody. Like, that's what I'm saying. All these incels who are like, I can't find a girlfriend. Bro, you're not doing, you're not meeting the right girls. Because there is a woman out there who will be with you. You know what I'm saying? King, my king, he's my king. My man's my king. Girl, the only king he's giving you is Burger King. And even then, he doesn't even want to work there. I'm going to say this right here, right now. It doesn't matter if you're a single parent, if you are co-parenting, if you are together, if you're married, it doesn't matter, okay? The most important thing in a child's life is seeing their parents have a good relationship with themselves and with the other person that they're parenting with, if that person is still in the picture. If you are in a relationship where you're staying just for the kids, but you don't love each other, then it's not gonna be a good dynamic for either of you, let alone the kids, because again, kids are sponges. You don't have to tell them anything, but they sense it, okay? They got a sixth sense, okay? They can smell fear on you. And one thing that a lot of people aren't talking about in the whole family Jenkins situation is the relationship relationship between Mrs. and Mr. Jenkins, allegedly because apparently her first husband's in prison, but I digress. The way Mrs. Jenkins jumps through hoops and does a double, triple axle and lands on her feet every time to defend this man. I mean, <laughs> girl, she should be in the Olympics, like buy some- <laughs> Miles. This man can do no wrong in her eyes. This man is her king, her rock, her everything. And I'm just like, let's calm down. And when I say he might as well just be some random guy in her life. Ooh, he's my, he's like, we're the same age. I'm 35. He's about to be 35. 
life he really might as well be because she has opened up about how he has only ever complimented her three times in their entire relationship i but don't understand how some people can deal with that if my husband doesn't call me the most beautiful creature on earth that he would drink glass for then i will crash out but honestly this kind of makes sense because unfortunately a lot of women who struggle with self-esteem or self-worth tend to rely on men who give them a sliver of attention and it's just really unfortunate because every person deserves someone who I mean, I do think like a certain level of toxicity plays into a lot of dynamics that we see and we don't realize it from wealthy families to impoverished families. There is a absolutely an underlining of misogyny and other things at play here that I think are so apparent in relationships where you're settling regardless. Anytime you have a settling relationship, there's going to be a problem there. But like this is mental health. These people need therapists. These people need to break generational curses like as much as we're saying like this isn't mental health it is in my mind mental health but i think it's the best they can literally do because people who can do better they do better like that's what i'm trying to say your life is a reflection of what you put into it the world's a reflection of what we put into it i can't ask the world to be better when this is literally the world we created it's the best we can do for now and we do better every day but like i do my best every day it's a solid 83 percent, but i do my best every day and even though there's more I want to do, I can't. So I know everybody else is working on that because I really do believe if they could do better, they would, but they can't right now. The question is, are they willing to do what it takes to be a person who can? And that's a very different question because I work really hard to adapt to be the person that tomorrow can do better than the person today. But like that takes effort and that's the effort and that's the difference that I think is really hard for people. And even for myself, until I was ready to do better in terms of therapy and getting my mental health taken care of, I was fine in my cycles. And then I realized like, okay, I need to do something else. I did that something else and it changed my trajectory, but I had to be ready to be that person. So I'm coming from a place where I'm trying to say, I know you have to first get to that place, but you also have to have the realization that you have to get there. And I think where they're at in their life, they're thinking they're doing fine. I think a lot of people are thinking they're doing great, even when they're drowning. They're like, I'm doing fine. Even when they're stressed, they're like, I'm doing fine. Because if you realize like you could change your whole life tomorrow, not literally overnight, but your perception of everything tomorrow, then that's the switch. And then you have to implement the change, which is the difficult part. Yeah. Kyle with the super chat, let's go, says Brittany is cooking today. I'm cooking. Everything in the house smells good. I'm hungry just thinking about it, girl. Guys, the next three days are going to be really stressful for a lot of people. So take deep breaths and realize you've done your best. If you voted, that's all you can do. Now we can just sit back, relax, and see what happens, okay? Happy election day, guys who definitely compliments them more than three times their entire relationship. But I mean, I do question her morality. She also has said her parenting techniques aren't meant to be quote unquote soft. Oh, I will not raise my kids with gentle parenting. You've got me bent next. I can agree with this for the most part. He's like old fashioned, like whip him around kind of uh, sense was just, it took it way too far. Like we don't, don't even take it that far. Which is really questionable. She also doesn't care for her current partner to make things right with his previous partner that he has children with. You guys are three whole ass adults. You should be able to figure out that dynamic and re kindling with your own son shouldn't be through a tiktok that your baby mama made of you calling you a deadbeat that's oh. really embarrassing but not only that that's really embarrassing for your son her name arlita which is nails by arita on tiktok oh. who is a very talented nail artist has said herself that it's really frustrating that mrs jenkins and mr jenkins not only owes child support but wants nothing to do with her son they also constantly put her son in their videos without oh. her consent and miss jenkins branding themselves as a multicultural family when in reality one of the kids is not even hers that is arlita's kid and miss jenkins is trying to make money off of her child even oh. though her so-called husband owes arlita child support it's just so backwards and it makes for an even messier situation when yo this got me stressed may oh may a love like this never find any of you but also one thing i will say to britney in her 20s regardless if she was making 12k a year or 20k a year or even 50k a year Thank you for always prioritizing birth control as a part of your budget. I will never love any part of myself more than that part of myself that maintains her birth control. I got it in my arm right now. It is what I prioritize. Before I even had sex with my now husband, I was like, we're getting birth control, girl. I'm not even going to take the risk. We're not even going to raw dog it once. You feel me? Not even once. And I'm going to marry you. That's how 
committed I am to not having a baby, even though I at the time wasn't even sure I was ready to not have babies. Okay. This is all I'm saying is thank God, no matter where I was in my life, no matter how conservative I grew up, no matter how anti-birth control I, I grew up, plan B, I will spend $50 on you, girl. Birth control, I will spend $1,000 on you, girl. Give no fucks. STI testing and birth control. Thank you to Pastor Brittany for being so diligent. This is the one gift I give you. Ladies, fight for your body. Fight for your right to control your body. Vote Kamala Harris, but also buy that birth control. Fuck the pill if it's not going to work for you. Check an IUD out. Don't get the copper if you're allergic to copper. I love the marina. Try the Nexplanon. That's what I've got. Though I will say you get like two periods a month or a period and a half. I just want to say it does make you bleed a lot. So just like not the best, but at least I'm not going to have a baby. Okay. And these grown adults can't be cordial and keep things in order for the sake of these children. And to avoid all of this responsibility by having another kid to add to this mess is just, I mean, it's so unfair and it's insanely irresponsible. And the fact that they want three more is very telling as to how delusional they are and how delusional. Mr. and Mrs. Jenkins enable each other to make very impulsive bad decisions without thinking. Now, you're probably wondering why they want to have three more kids, even though they can't even afford the ones that they currently have, let alone their two cats and the other family that the dad is avoiding. Well, guys, it's because god told them to and she stops and says i want to ask you guys about your spiritual life like do you guys like believe in god who says that we should be fruitful and multiply i grew up in extreme religion okay if you guys haven't seen my video on how i grew up basically in a cult this is it right oh. here i recommend that you watch it it's a very good video and explains a lot about my life my upbringing how my parents were pastors and stuff point is i know a lot about the bible okay and when i tell you this type of family dynamic is extremely common where Ooh. people will have kid after kid after kid that they can't afford because they believe that the lord said in the bible that that's what they have to do and that the more that they have the more blessed they will be and that the more that they have god will take care of them only to find themselves in a situation where they literally cannot afford anything at all this happens way too much i keep saying that god prepared me for this and for every all the loud noise of the hate he silences it he does he really does the first one that I see misconstrued a lot is the quiverful Bible verse. In Psalm 127, 3, 5 says, Behold, children are a heritage from the Lord, the fruit of the womb a reward. Like arrows in the hand of a warrior are the children of one's youth. Blessed is the man who fills his quiver with them. He shall not be put to shame when he speaks with his enemies in the gate. In this context, it's a long ass time ago, okay, it's not 2024, and the psalmist is describing children as blessings and a source of strength, comparing them to arrows that- I will say, as much as my parents had like 10 kids, and they definitely want you to have babies, I don't- I did not get this feeling from my parents. Like, I always felt like they really wanted to be parents. Like, as much as they didn't have time for all of us, they also tried very hard to have time for all of us. My mom was a stay-at-home mom. She worked before and after and then stayed home with the kids. She works now, obviously. There's no kids at home. But it's one of those things where I did really genuinely feel like my parents wanted children. Like, wanted their kids. Like, I feel like they genuinely love being parents. And it was just luck of the draw that they had so many kids. Um, but there is an underlining also fulfillment they get from, like, having souls for christ right joke is like only 50 percent of the kids are like catholic really so it's kind of funny but yeah like it's interesting when you have these families like i didn't feel not loved by my parents for the record um i but i i also knew that it came god first then mom and dad then us like i was i knew that god was first which is hard growing up in a religious home in that way for sure that a warrior carries in a quiver. In ancient societies, large families would be seen as a form of support, protection, and riches in abundance, especially in times of hardship because there was always famine, storms, and diseases, which made children both a practical, cultural, and financial blessing. And if all your children survived through the hundreds of diseases, plagues, and poverty, storms, and natural disasters, then you were seen as blessed because everyone was dying back then. So that is what the verse means. However, in modern times, this Bible verse has been misconstrued time and time again, and the historical biblical context has been misconstrued time and time again. It promotes the idea that families should have as many children as possible as a sign of faithfulness and obedience to God, even though God is seeing people on their seventh kid struggling, and he's probably in heaven like, shaking my damn head. A lot of people interpret this verse as a divine commandment. Just have as many kids as you can, which is so insanely irresponsible. Cause I mean, if the Lord let you struggle with your first kid, then your second kid, then your third kid, and then your fourth kid, 
What makes you think he about to bless you even more on your 6th or 7th or 8th or 10th? And look, no hate to my homie Jesus. I love that guy. I do believe in a spiritual aspect of life. And I do believe that spiritual side of life does come in clutch in hard times. But if we're going to start using Bible verses to benefit our movement and beliefs, then let me pull one out for you. <clears throat> uh oh. First Timothy 5.8. If anyone does not provide for his relatives, especially for the members of his own household, he has denied the faith oh. and is worse than an unbeliever. Oh. <sighs> Oh, Jesus said, fuck you, bitch. <laughs> he said, if you're poor and can't provide for your family, fuck you, bitch. Oh, shit, bitch. Mm -hmm. I'm talking about this. Okay, final topic. How the resilient Jenkins played all of us. I think it's important for all types of families who are rich, poor, middle class, whatever, to share their stories and to make content and to create community. I don't think there's anything wrong with that. And there's just certain things that I think the internet is just not meant to see. And if you can't handle people criticizing that, then maybe you shouldn't be overly exposing that. But then again, thank God some people are stupid enough to overshare because if they never did in the first place, many True. of us would have no idea what's truly going on behind closed doors, especially exactly. in the world of family. Yo, the way people proudly just say out loud you know what i'm saying like that's the thing that's so interesting about people that's why i'll never get bored watching youtube videos because these are people like oh, i love like pe people really just tell you who they are like they say it with their full chest like those two quote nice israeli boys who are like oh yeah we'd want to fight every palestinian i'm like oh my gosh like you're just saying it with your full chest it's amazing like it's a really amazing that people feel so confident telling you that they hate you i'm just so impressed like in some ways that people are so honest because like we live in such a world with liars that it's kind of amazing these people are a mixture of liars and they're telling you who they are they're so boldly telling you family influencers tiktokers channels and more who kind of brands themselves as being not only wholesome but also helpless and they need your help to keep their family going and again this isn't really wrong a lot of people are struggling nowadays and turning to social media can change a lot of families lives however i feel like nowadays there is definitely this trend of learned helplessness especially in our current generation people who suffer from learned helplessness will make it everybody else's problem to solve for them and i just isn't learned help helplessness just a generational curse isn't that just trauma I just feel disturbed when i know for a fact there are actual families out there who are truly struggling because they have a disabled parent or they only have one parent or they have disabled children and even then they're still trying their best they're not making content off of it exploiting their kids or exploiting kids that aren't even theirs for a profit and know that their situation requires more attention on their current kids rather than planning for five or six more i swear family channels and vloggers and influencers get exposed like every month there's a new family who yep. has like dirty dark deep secrets who are presenting actually a part of me does think it's always almost always a red flag when people are willing to put their family on tv like i can't think of an instance where it wasn't a red flag in the same way i don't think it's ever not a red flag when you put your kids in hollywood like i can't think of a time when it wasn't a red flag that your child was a childhood actor you know what i'm saying like i think that's the issue with using this as a means of escaping poverty or escaping your life or exploiting your kids. Family friendly, like lovable, quirky people. And it's crazy to me that people fall for it still to this day, especially with the resilient Jenkins situation. The resilient Jenkins want to make money off of this and they even uploaded an Amazon registry where people can yep. buy them stuff and people actually bought stuff. Now, granted, there was some stuff on the registry that was for the kids. And look, that kind of stuff is so interesting to me that I think this is the point though. I think on a planet of 8 billion people, there are people that are willing to buy these people things. And if that's the case, then they're kind of smart for, for putting their family on the internet as a means to make money. Because obviously, if they could do it another way, they would. But their brain can't figure it out. I don't even know if they're taking advantage of them, but they found the crowd on the internet that's willing to give them things. And I think that, you know, what are you going to do? Like, what are you going to do? People also bought stuff like a ring light so that these people can continue making content, which is crazy to me. But people will still constantly defend this family, defend their choices, and blame literally anything but the parents for their own decisions. And honestly, I, I don't know why, especially after finding out everything that I have found out, against my will, by the way. How is it possible <laughs> that through one viral video of this family, everyone knows your business? Everyone knows your business with two scrolls. I found all of this within like three scrolls. You know, that is the question. Some streamers, that's their model. Like for some content creators, the model is to like definitely overshare. And then for other families, it's to build the anger. So then you have to ask yourself, are the Jenkins rage baiting? And is that what this is really about? Right? Is this a rage bait uh, marketing decision?
And that makes me really worried for the kid's future because this oversharing will leak into the kid's privacy. Once they can monetize it even more and once these kids are older, they will be used to financially make up for what the parents lack at the expense of their privacy and mental health. And that happens a lot. But here's the thing, your children owe you nothing. Your children owe you nothing. And that is something that a lot of parents don't want to hear because they want to hear like, oh, you're going to take care of me when I'm older, mija. You're going to do this. Like, like no don't touch me ma'am no there is a reason why a lot of people are going no contact with their families and that's all i gotta say about that and just watch there is going to be a huge rise of these kids getting older and going no contact with their families because it's like discord says it doesn't feel that smart but rather just where it all fell i agree i don't think they're smart enough to actually like rage bait and think about it but i think they might be malicious enough or that kind of, they may be like, yeah, baby, we just got piss them off. Let's piss off the internet. They might do that. Because then if they're not that, like, if they're not really thinking about it in that way, and they are just living their life, then the internet's really f***ed up for bullying them. I actually think what's f***ed up about them is they might be self-aware of what they're doing. But if they're not self-aware that what they're doing is actually bad for their kids, then they're just like an ignorant parents who are doing their best and you guys are bullying them. Because I think it's kind of up if you're bullying people who genuinely are like i'm really doing my best i don't see why you're mad at me but if it's a couple that's like Fuck you like this is good enough like you guys are just pissed like you know what i mean like that then you can come in and be kind of angry at them and that you were trying to start drama online just to pay wait i think chat's right that they started off going for sympathy but ended up making people upset i think you're right i think that's what happened yeah are built like some stuff should be kept private unless you're trying to become better unless you are seeking help but it seems like these people aren't trying to get better and they're not trying to seek help there is a massive difference between people asking for genuine help and then just uploading an amazon registry that involves a ring light so that you can continue making content because you yourself said that your husband agreed that if you keep having kids and if, and if you guys can become viral family vloggers that it's okay to continue having even more kids in this environment for the sake of you know what's crazy i knew a family that made like $100,000 a year, like 70 to $100,000 a year with one kid and their house looked like that. And they were great. They were very happy, but they were, it was just a boy apartment. It was a very boy apartment, super dirty, not lice or anything, but like the carpet was so up, holes in the carpet. The bathroom just looked like only boys have ever lived in this house. Very nice family, like very sweet people, but their house was disgusting. And like, it was so funny because I was like, you're the nicest people in the world. You go to work every day. You're a hard worker. Your, your kids are great. Like, why do you live like this? And it was just like the way they were comfortable. They were just so comfortable living like that. And I will never not think that's interesting. Like I can't, I get, I get anxiety when there's too many appliances on my counter. Like, I'm like, why do we even need a toaster? Like, I don't even have a toaster. Cause I'm like, why do I need one more thing on my counter? So it's one of those things where I don't think these kids the families that I know, I don't even think they were being, well, I think they were being neglected in some ways, but I don't think they were being CPS abused, right? I think they were, they just, humans are animals and that was the nest they were comfortable in. Like humans make nests, like we make homes and some people are just comfortable in certain homes. Now, do I think that with therapy and introspection and stuff, do people feel more comfortable in cleaner homes? I do. Do I think there's a point where your mental health is also unstable if your home is too clean? Yes. Like, I think you need balance. I think in homes that are spotless and don't look lived in, I assume mental health is a problem. And I assume a, ho a home that never looks like it ever gets cleaned, there's mental health because there's no balance. Anytime I see a people who are not in balance, that to me indicates like an issue. So, you know, I'm just saying it's interesting of clout like uh huh guys is that the same as asking for help because i don't think so they're constantly making excuses and the reason why i wanted to make a video about this is because this type of family dynamic is so common in real life that it's actually really sad it's because i know people like this in real life and how much it pisses me off it's not fair that kids have to suffer for the bad decisions that the adults make around them children were not asked to be brought into the world and to basically put that burden on them is so insanely unfair. And here's the thing, you don't have to be rich to be a good parent. I've seen plenty of well-off parents who are just as selfish, that are just as disgusting and neglectful. Yeah. 
True. I've seen poor families whose kids are loving and caring, who have fun. It's all about the family dynamic, where the priorities are at, where the resources yep. are going to, yep. who's prioritizing who, having those boundaries, having privacy as a family and having family time, learning to grow and change together. And the fact that there are some people saying, you're doing your best mama, everyone struggles. No, I'm sorry. There is a massive difference between a mom who is in survival mode, a parent who is in survival mode, a mom who is struggling economically versus a mediocre mom and a mediocre parent who clearly doesn't want help. And I'm getting sick and tired of people praising the mediocre and trying to normalize the mediocre just so that they who are also mediocre can feel better about themselves or feel like, oh, I'm relieved because someone else is just as mediocre as me. And I know that's yeah. very rude. That's true, but that's the cycle of, of that's okay. That's kind of why you want to have friends around you that lift you up and get you to a better place. Because if all your friends are stagnant and you're all just like, you're doing good enough, you're doing good enough, but all of you are keeping each other at a lower level, that's like one of the things that you have to pay attention to is like, are you rising to the occasion? Like as a unit, let's, okay, let's zoom out and just talk about them as a married couple. As a married couple, are they actually getting each other to be better than they were yesterday? Or are they actually keeping them mediocre? And there's nothing wrong with being simple or average, but there is something wrong with, I think, not trying to get slightly healthier or better in some ways over time. So I will say that like something I admire and appreciate in my own partner is that they and I work our hardest to make each other like we work our hardest to make each other better and at our own pace within reason. But we we cheerlead each other. We're always like we want to be better than this. Like I, re I really appreciate that I have a partner who sits down and does the budget with me. We sit down and talk about chores and cleanliness. We sit down and talk about Indiana. We sit down and talk about our life. We talk about the future, but we also talk about the standard of existence. Like when we first moved into this place. We, you know, we had been living out of boxes for just a second because, you know, it takes a while. I'm very slow with unpacking. Once we finally got all the boxes taken out of the apartment and everything was clean, the relief I felt in my soul was so apparent. And I and I told my partner, like when I wake up and I come into the living room, I just want it to be clean because it just makes me feel relieved that like there's nothing, there's no mess and if we want to have spaces in our house that we allow our clutter to exist, like inside of our closets, I don't care. But it's like one of those things where I just want to feel relief in the morning or like dishes. OK, I love a clean dish, a, a clean sink in the the day. Like I, I struggle with the perk of having a clean like the perk of having a dishwasher, not having a clean kitchen. So we always talk about how often we have to do dishes, which with us because we cook all the time is all the time like we are both cooks. We cook it. We're an ingredient household. So we are always doing dishes. And I'm one of those people that cook with like 17 dishes. I don't know what's wrong with me. I've always been this way. I can't just cook with one di dish. I need like 20. And so I am always doing dishes, but it's one of those things where like, you know, we do dishes together to keep our house at a certain standard. And it is something we have to prioritize spoons wise. So as chronically health, uh, ill people, like we have to think about, okay, if we're going to cook this often, maybe we can meal prep. We have to do dishes this often, which means this is our spoons. And I know that's really hard for people who have kids and are running around. But this couple doesn't seem like they are having those conversations right now. If you watched my review of Love is Blind season seven and you watch the way Alex lives her life. If you watch the way Alex kept her apartment, Alex's apartment would give me anxiety because like it is messy. Now, I don't think Alex is a bad person because her apartment is messy, but I would see it as like a red flag of like, hey, is this going to be our life if we get married? Because if we get married and this is our life, like I'm going to have a problem. I don't mind if you're this way when you're single because it's not my business. It's your space. But when we're married, like I don't I need you to update. You know, and Alex's apartment was like a lot of girls. That I know a lot of ADHD girls I know who have piles of clothes and piles of things and they walk all over their clothes and they just kind of live in piles. I have friends now that are single and in their 30s, same lifestyle, piles and piles of clothes everywhere. I myself during COVID, piles and piles of clothes everywhere. And then eventually you have to have a, a like, I don't want to call it this because this is kind of not true, but like an adult home. It's kind of like you have to have an adult apartment, but an adult apartment is a kind of ableist term. So I just want to be very open minded to that is there's a standard of adulting that indicates cleanliness, but I don't think that's true. I think what it indicates more or less is a relationship with self, a symbiosis with having a space that's clean and functional and reasonable, but also understanding that it does take spoons to organize these things. So you also have to like count it against your energy. And I know that, right? like, I know that it's hard. I'm speaking from experience. Like, again, I need a motivator to kind of not pile my stuff everywhere. I'm lucky that I have one. 
for some people, they don't have that motivator. So it's harder for them. And my heart goes out to you because I've, I've been there. So I think that that's what I would like to see from the Jenkins. I would love to see them actually uplift each other to be better. Neither of them are working. So I feel like their apartment should be pristine. As an example, if none of you are working, then your, then your apartment should be pristine, right? Like if you're not using eight hours, 10 hours of your time to be out of the house, then I assume you'd put that 10 hours into organizing your apartment. And the fact that their apartment is like kind of always messy is an indication that they're not uplifting each other as partners or cheerleaders or anything else. Thing to say, but that's why I said it. Y'all remember how I said earlier in this video that I'm really close to Portland and I know the types of people who live there. Yeah, <laughs> you guys probably thought that wouldn't get brought up again, but here I am because I'm about to say something. The fact that this mom is a weed smoking, sage burning, dream catcher, cultural appropriating white woman. Uh oh, she said all the words. She said all the words. How do they have money for weed? No offense. Priorities. How do you have money for weed? Like, that's crazy. And isn't she pregnant? Okay. Okay. Makes a lot of sense. And there are tons of those in Portland, by the way. In general, whenever something bad happens or whenever there's an influencer that go that gets exposed, guys, why do they always live like an hour or two hours away from me? And here's the thing, whenever they do get exposed, literally everyone who's from Portland or Washington look around and be like, yeah, that makes sense. I mean, y'all. <laughs> Onision lives in Seattle. I got catcalled <laughs> once by a man on like a 10 foot unicycle once. Like just anyone in the Pacific Northwest in general tend to be not okay in the head. But see, that stuff is starting to make sense, right? Stuff is starting to make sense. <sighs> but you know what? Those mountains and waterfalls, the amount of small coffee shops that we have here, the fact that Coraline and Twilight were filmed here Ooh. makes me deal with all of this. Um, isn't Forks in Washington? Isn't Portland? Oh, Portland, Washington, not Portland, Oregon? Wait. For, I've been to Forks, Washington. It's in Washington, right? I lived in Washington. Now I'm confused. I love it here, not gonna lie. And just the vibes of the Pacific Northwest and how open people are, but- Oh, the Northwest, the Northwest. Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. It really do be going too far sometimes. Like, they will come up to you in the store and be like, I'm so sorry we took your land. And they'll be like, I'm 1% <laughs> native. And my grandma was a Cherokee princess, so I understand the oppression. That's why I burn what? sage every morning. It's like, um, I have an actual native friend. Like, her mom's straight up from the reservations. And she don't even do that, bruh. Also, I know how much <laughs> weed costs, okay? It's expensive here in Portland. Exactly. So if you got enough money for that, mm, I don't know. My sister says to me the other day, I don't know how you do it. You just have this, like, ability to keep going no matter what, no matter how tired you are. Sis... It is because I smoke marijuana. I got that Mary Jane running through my vein. Some things ain't checking out. So she's, okay. I know this is controversial, but I feel like you shouldn't be smoking weed when pregnant. I know some people do. I think there's like a way to do it medically and probably safe. I don't want to cause stigma more than necessary. But I am very like, nothing should be in your body when you're pregnant. But also like the fact that she's bragging about it. I don't know. I don't know. Seems suspicious, but okay. Now, nah, because there are videos of her clearly being hella zooted, bro. Like, that's not being high off the Holy Spirit, y'all. That's something else. Here, y'all go in the comments. You can be a, a parent and smoke weed. Oh my. It's the principle behind it, y'all. The fact is that sis clearly has money for that, but nothing else. Priorities. Again, priorities. A lot of people of color, especially black people online, are talking about the Jenkins thing, about how because she's a white woman, she's garnering a lot more sympathy than a black woman would if she were in the same situation. And you know what? I, I agree. I, I, I kind of agree. Everything doesn't have to be about skin color, but y'all need to be honest with yourselves when you're talking about this Brazilian Jenkins situation. The number one factor as to why people are saying you have two loving parents in the household is because the mother is not black. If that mom was black, every single positive video- Is she black? Is she Indian? Who knows? She's got the ganja. She's smoking it. She's got the babies. They're loving it. Will they come out a little slower? Who knows? Is she black? Is she white? All we know is she's green. That's what we know video about this negligent couple would not be it, it wouldn't be it wouldn't be post nobody cares about helping people when they are trying they're not even trying y'all got four cats in there and it's dirty get a job people are also <laughs> saying get a job bro that she clearly has a fetish of not only breederism but also like race by the way yes people like this are definitely common in portland oregon where they fetishize oh god oh cringe bro i keep reading those chats I kept reading those chats where y'all thought she was like fetishizing pregnancy or whatever. Cringe, mental health, go to therapy. 
a kink is a kink is a kink, but not at the expense of your children. If you have a kink that is at the expense of your children, that's mental health, girl. Is a lot of POC. It's really weird. As you can see, it says, point of view, you are pregnant with superior genes that fight through terrain of Makako. I, I don't know if I'm pronouncing that correctly. She said, this honestly isn't meant to ruffle anyone's feather, but it's a post giving respect to how incredible my hubby's genetics are. He makes some of the strongest, most resilient babies. And of course, I play my role. Massa, this one got some good genes, Massa. Oh, oh no. Oh my god. Oregon and these places were known for having EBT available for everyone, for having government assistance, for having food stamps. There are literally so many resources here. So to turn to social media instead for those resources tells me everything. When even also, are they paying their 20% tax on these 1099 TikTok monies? I who live here know about these programs and the majority of people do is crazy. You are single-handedly passing down trauma. Generational trauma is real. The yes, girl, she is passing down generational trauma. And she is a product of it, no doubt. No doubt she is a product of it. And this is why I say be cautious thinking every generation is able to break a generational curse when the reality is like, then why didn't your mama do it? If it's so easy to break a generational curse, what's wrong with your mama? Okay? Your mama llama, mama Kamala. Why, why, what's wrong with your mama? I don't want to go after anyone's mamas, but your mama couldn't do it. You think you're going to do it? Please curse of generational trauma is so real and so many also i do think you can do it you've got this bitch you can do it bitch okay your mama couldn't do it but you can do it i believe in you any of these people online who are normalizing this type of behavior or even people in real life who normalize this type of behavior don't understand that and they should absolutely understand that i found the jenkins content to be so triggering because there are so many families that start off like that that eventually become very broken continue to perpetuate the generational curse of poverty trauma and just a lot of bad stuff and when i tell you it's not the nicest thing to see when those kids grow up um it's it's not it's not nice because this is how the generational curse of broken families start true no th no this is the continuation this is not the start this is the continuation. Also, just a heads up. Great point chat says, what are they going to do after TikTok gets banned? It's getting banned in January. <laughs> Sorry, Americans. I'm in Croatia. I can do what I want. But like, yeah, y'all are going to lose TikTok. <laughs> January 25th, I think. Yeah. So all those people that were like relying on TikTok for money, uh, you better figure out where you're getting that second uh, source of income. You better figure it out, girl. Mm-hmm where people avoid their past families and past responsibilities where people ignore the red flags and continue to push through wanting more kids using excuse after excuse manipulating outside people to enable them so that they can continue this twist and turn the narrative and their appearance to be seen as innocent wholesome and helpless to garner that sympathy from True. outside people i think i've seen this film before and i didn't like the ending you know what i mean it's the most heartbreaking heart-wrenching thing because my heart doesn't break for the family or the situation. It's for the children, their yeah. futures, their privacy. The main focus should be them, their environmental health, their actual health, and their mental health. And quite frankly, I'm sick and tired of acting as if we have to continually spare the feelings of the adults in these kids' lives who are continually making bad choices at the expense of the reality being lived out by the children. Whether you want to help or whether you don't want to help, it's totally up to you. I'm just a random hoe on the internet that's just talking about this situation and my opinions on it. Even if you want to help the Resilient Jenkins family, just make sure it's focused on the kids. Don't buy them a ring light. And free my two <laughs> boys, Mr. Fluffy Mittens and Mr. Whiskers. They don't deserve this. Why don't I DoorDash? DoorDash is like having a W-2. Mm, no, nothing's wrong with a W-2. Uh, there's no W-2 that's gonna give me 30 plus dollars an hour. Right off, right off the jump of what I need. I've been working since I've been 18 years old. I don't have to work night shift. I worked night shift for 10 years. I don't have to work night shift. And nor do I want to. I, I thought that mm. like putting, using a viral video and then using it for yourself like as a stitch or something might bring you more attention, but I quickly... It's interesting. I was, um, I was talking to somebody and they said that they had worked so many hours that it basically is the equivalent of somebody working like a full-time job till retirement. They're like, they're tired and they just want to work a normal 40 hour job week. And I think that's beautiful. I think Americans should be able to work 40 hours and have it be enough. But that's, that's the issue with politics. And it's interesting because these people are often conservative. Like the people I, I hear the most who who are voting Trump are sick of paying tax and they're sick of having to work so much. But then the irony is like, you're living under tax, like Trump's economy right now. This is Trump's economy. 
this is what he's offering you more of this. So that's like kind of the irony, right? Is I think like people have to understand is like Trump doesn't care about the working American. Like they just, he just doesn't, he never has, he never will. He has no idea what you're going through. He just wants to be liked. He just wants you to think he's cool. Okay. He does not care about you. He wants to avoid prison, wants to make money, does not have any, he has no idea how you're living your life. Just has no idea. So it's kind of interesting to me, you know, that idea of like, you know, they just want to work. Everybody wants to, everybody should be able to work 40 hours a week. The dilemma is how we're going to do that. How does that work in our communities? And is that even a possibility moving forward? Look, if the, if we need to adapt to be working more, like, look, I'm not an, I can't give up. I can't give up on my life. I've already asked myself if I was going to do that. I decided not to do it, which means I'm going to adapt and I'm going to always pay homage to my ancestors that had to have a much rougher go of life than I ever had to, to acknowledge that it's still a struggle. It's still hard, but I'm always going to try to adapt as much as possible. And if that means picking up a fourth stream of income or doing like a fifth, it's not great. You know, if that means my partner, you know, gets a full time job somewhere, if that means we move country, if that means, you know, if we need it again, don't we'll, don't work yourself to the bone. I'm not going to do it like I'm not going to work myself to death. Right. I'm going to work myself to life. And I think that's the way we should do it in America. They teach you to work yourself to death, work yourself to life. OK, do what's good for your family, your situation, your disability. Do what makes sense for you, because no one's going to no one's going to do it for you. And then do what makes sense. And I know I know that's so much easier said than done. And it's not easy, by the way. But what's harder for me is living in a life where I've given up. That was too hard. Giving up was too hard for me. I couldn't do it. And so it was either that or die. And girl, nobody has time to die. I'm busy. OK, I'm busy looking this cute for stream. You know what I'm saying? So, again, do whatever you need to motivate yourself, but work yourself to life, not to death. We found that's not the case. Really? Generating that many more dollars to just say that I'll say all that? All right, guys, that is it for today's video. Thank you guys so much for watching. If you watched the entire thing, comment down a duck emoji down below so I know you guys watched the entire thing because if you did, you went in. Wow, that's so old school YouTube. Internet hug. Here you go. Remember wow. to like, comment. That's a, that's old, tube, old YouTube engagement tricks right there, guys. Like the stream, though. Seriously, do. And then this is um, Salem Tover. For you guys wondering who this was, I'm going to go ahead and link her video in the chat. Loved, 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 loved it. I'm going to go ahead and link in the chat. Thank you, Discord, for recommending that video. I'm glad we watched it together. I'm glad we got a rundown of the Jenkins. No matter your circumstance, is this who you want to be in the story? Because no one can write your history but you. Yes, people contribute to your story, but you ultimately are the author. So why's my life a mess? Please tell me cause I'm sick of thinking Yeah, I'm sick of reaching out for the truth And living life as a fool Dun, 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 dun